Hello there and welcome to a new episode of Afterthoughts. My name is Wim Winters and today I recorded the Haydn Sonata in A-flat major. A rather early sonata, 1767, 68, and it's this one. What's interesting, as many things interesting uh, in this piece, it's a beautiful adagio, a very pleasant presto, maybe one of the faster pre uh, last finale parts that I know. Um, maybe in a second about it, the, the presto. First of all, the first movement was the two things actually very difficult. I find very difficult. Besides the details, first of all are the trills. You have very um, uh, many very short trills, and which is some players do play them with with much ease. I have more a motoric feeling for fast note values like like scale. But the very fine motoric feeling you need for trills. And certainly the trills that comes after very long notes. You have to change the motoric very fast. And second thing is the, the movement of this piece, Allegro Moderato. I don't know what my tempo is compared to other uh, performances, but this is a wonderful piece to show what the metrical feeling of movement is. And we we'll talk about it in, in a second. First, he trills. Um, one of the things that, for me, with playing trills beautifully and Haydn, also with Mozart, but certainly this music of Haydn, and it's very much to be compared with Emmanuel Bach's music concerning the trills, they need to be clear and very well articulated because it's it's an obvious um, part of the music performance and of the technical music performance as well. Um, so what I do, and I try to, is prepare them, but play them a little bit softer than I think, uh, softer, slower than I think the trill. If you prepare a trill, motorically, certainly when you have trills that comes after a low note, Moreover, in this difficult key, because you have many trills, where you start on the, on the uh, what's this, it's the black note, it's, you're going from the C to the B flat, so from a normal key to an upper key, which imbalances your hand, because it's much, much easier to have two normal keys than going from this one to an upper key, because you have to balance your hand, and moreover, the balance of the key is different. So these trills are difficult, difficult. So if I prepare them in my mind, of course you hear them more or less, and you can feel them in advance. You should try that. And then for me, one of the key elements to play these trills is to play the trill a little bit slower than I hear the trill in my mind. And that sounds very strange, I guess, if you have never thought about this like this or never tried this but you have to try it and maybe you won't succeed from the first time but it's a very nice trick actually it saves many trails for me um, of course it happens days that, that things go so smoothly that I don't have to think about any trail and that all trails come out exactly as I want to have them but certainly in pieces like this for me they may sound the trills as if I play them very easy, but I really have to work hard on them to make them well, very well articulated. So just play a little. And what you can try to do also is, if you look carefully, I just balance my hand between the two notes. So what I actually
actually do is divide the weight of my wrist or maybe even my arm from one note to the other. And by doing that, I enable actually the new touch. I give them, the, I give both of the figures the same weight. And then the articulation is done by the fingers, just by the speed and then the articulation. So that's I, just to say to you that uh, these trills are difficult for me. So don't think that I just play that without thinking and uh, I have to work on them. Now, the metrical feeling of the piece, um, and we've talked about this in, in the earlier afterthoughts, about a kind of building a tension in the piece uh, by heavy beats and light beats. And instead of trying to create long bows of tension like you would do in more late later 19th century music we have long bows a little bit of ribato in between so to create a kind of tension over a kind of certain period for me in this music in 18th century music there is more like a metrical feeling so if you start a piece like this not be that fast but the tension is not over the beat but within the beat so there's not a kind of urge from this A flat to go to the F major F from the moment I play the F you feel the connection but the tension is within this light Strong light beat. So I'm not doing. I could do that, and in some music it works, but not not in this kind of music for me. And then these long notes, play them as long as you can. And of course, this four beat structure proceeds. I mean, you go from the first to the second to the third to the fourth. So there is a kind of bow, a kind of connection. But to me, for my feeling, don't try to rush things, don't try to push them, push them. They come on, on the right time, and that's what I call a metrical feeling. Just the metrum is there, and everything is happening within that metrum, and that gives it tension. And if you proceed then in the piece, you'll see that there's development of, of, of faster note values, and then if you can keep the same movement, this, the same tension, it works very nice. And I sometimes give a little bit in these, these scales and I come back. But 
it's not so important here. It is just the violin accompaniment for the for the melody. And if there are, if you go to the um, reprise or just before, then you have this passage where you come here. <laughs> This is so big when you just go in there. There's a little bit of rebato, it's a free passage. Question mark with your arms. Okay, then I have the beautiful adagio, which to me I feel it a little bit more in andante tempo. It's beautiful on the clavichord, where you can keep on this this uh, B flat that goes over the bar. Three notes articulated just because I like that. It's the descent and it's over on the D flat, and it's just ending on the phrase. Time. So, also here, if you have a nice movement that just flows, and I let, let the music just continue. Okay, and then comes the presto, which is uh, in 2 4. And we talked about this, this is just the last thing I, I, I mentioned. Also for the first uh, movement, it's written in 4-4 with, with Haydn, you see often that he writes allegro moderato, slower, he slows down the movement. And you see that in the note values also, he uses faster note values than in the normal tempo ordinario, normal 4-4 bar structure. It's with 16 notes, structural notes as, as a fastest note value. So here you have triplets and six, uh, six notes per, per quarter note. So it goes faster, so he's slowing down the tempo, and then you play in eight notes actually. So and you could say it's not four four, it's eight eight. And certainly for two four bar structures that is often written also in sources that two four actually means four eight. So he slowed down the tempo. You and the high and last movements often are indicated as presto. Um, but to me, that's more as a counterbalance to the two four bar structure. So he, what, what he's basically saying is don't play it too slow. It's a kind of slow notation as I feel it, but you have to speed it up again. Here, I play it on the, on the, on the fastest. I think that that's, that's possible in this notation. Could imagine also a slower tempo. So both are possible, and maybe the slower one, what I think might be the more historical one. So maybe I just rush a little bit because I liked it tonight. And it's a, it's a really uh, joyful piece, this uh, this last movement. So uh, you, you can do different things with it. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, please, if you have questions, don't hesitate to ask. Uh, also about things, pieces we have covered yet, I can come back on that in future episodes. So there's no, really no problem. 
So thank you for watching. Thank you for sharing and subscribing to these videos and sharing them with your friends. And we see each other very soon again. Bye. Ask